I'm the only one. Thank Goldberg. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, guys, welcome back to Fog Wrestling. I'm here with a SmackDown review, and we're going to just review the clips in the order that I watched them in. So we have uh, Sonya Deville coming out basically saying that she's fined Ronda Rousey a hundred grand. She's basically slabbering about Rousey and uh, Naomi here. I mean, I don't like, well, I don't like an understatement. I actually kind of hate Deville and, um, Deville and Pierce on the show, right? But I think Deville is honestly, like, over the past couple of months, she's got better. Adam Pierce is just so fucking shit. It's unbelievable. Like, literally, man. Like, there's just nothing to the guy. It's actually shite how bad he is. But here, the clip says McMahon shuts down Sonya Deville. When in reality, it's fucking Adam Pierce with an email for Vince McMahon. And you're sitting here thinking, McMahon is backstage. Like, why can't he be there? Is it too much to fucking ask? Like, maybe McMahon looks like shite and he couldn't be arse dragging his carcass out to the ring. And that's probably true, but, yeah, basically Sonya Deville gets shut down here. Says in the email that McMahon doesn't like people in power, power abusing their power in the WWE. Even though that was basically his entire gimmick for, like, 20 fucking years. So, <laughs> so yeah, I don't really understand that. Um, next up, we have Big E and Kofi Kingston. So, yeah, the New Day. Taking on the Lethal Lovers. They did a kiss cam before the match, which was pretty funny. And you may be thinking, easy win for the New Day here. Two world champs in the past two and a half years. No, nah, the Lethal Lovers pick up the win. And it's like, if that doesn't go to show that these two are jobbers. I mean, Big E, Big e was a champion like a month ago. Like fucking 35 days, 30, 40 days ago. Look mess, guys. But we move on to like, our next, I mean, there's just a bunch of jobber segments on this show, but... Um, yeah, but the next one's not too bad. With the sit down interview, Michael Cole's doing one with Goldberg, one with Roman Reigns. First off, we have Roman Reigns. Basically, Mc Michael Cole says we had the return of an icon last Friday. Paul Heyman says, I'm good, but I'm only the counselor to the tribal chief. And he went, No, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about Goldberg. So that got a cheap pop out of me. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, Cole basically goes on to say that Goldberg won 173 matches in a row in WCW. Um, and Roman turns around and says, um, if I was in WCW, would, they'd all still be winning because they wouldn't be out of business. Which is a decent line, but I feel like, I don't know, like, I feel like there's every time there's like a, a WCW wrestler or like icon or just like reference that they have to like allude to or pay per view name. Like, the, like I like, I like the fact they mention it because I like, I like nostalgia. I like a block because mentioning WCW is fucking more over than any of the stuff in the show. Like, so I mean, no problem with it, but. It's like, they just have to, it's like, they have to like twist the knife in the fucking WCW in it. And maybe because Heyman's there and he here at WCW, maybe that's it, like, but fucking mad. But yeah, I mean, it was a decent wee promo for Reigns. He says he's going to Goldberg, Goldberg, which means like destroy him, of course. He says it ain't 2012 anymore, it's 2022, even though in 2012 Goldberg was 45 and not exactly in his prime. Um, I, Goldberg's prime was the late 90s, like, I mean, even... He was still good, like, in 2000. It's like, I'm not going to say he wasn't, but even though he's run, people are like, oh, you got buried, do, do, all this shite. Um, yeah, and then we have Naomi taking on Charlotte Flair for the women's title, right? And I tell you what, guys, right? I don't like women's wrestling, but see the difference between women's wrestling, AEW, and WWE? Holy good fuck, man. WWE is, is, so, is so much... I already knew it before this match, but this just highlighted it. Here, it's actually fucking... It, it, it looks far more real it's like far more like seeing in aw it's so fucking sloppy now i'm not gonna say right of course when we reviewed the women's rumble it's always sloppy the way they get over the top rope right but at least in WWE, the women can do the basics you know and there is women who are pretty good in WWE and can wrestle like they are a near enough level the men but the point is guys the WWE women are much better but yes here we have charlotte retaining her uh, smackdown Women's title as the door slams open there. Um, which, alright, I mean, Naomi, there was a couple of close falls, but realistically, she was never going to win here. I mean, there's, there's just no way it was ever going to happen. Like, let's just be fucking real about it. No chance. That is what you've got. No chance in hell. Because that's just the way the bottom um, line is, guys. Because they were never going to fuck up the, the Rousey feud for the sake of this. But that's just my opinion. You can leave your thoughts down below. 
on that. We also have Sane doing another insane show. Are they going to do Sami Sane versus Johnny Knoxville at Mania? They might. But who knows? Next up, uh, yeah, basically Boogs and Nakamura. Come this Boogs guy actually has charisma. Like, I'm not going to deny it. Um, but then Sane, like, electric shocks him and then he kicks Nakamura as they both lie on top of each other really awkwardly. We also have Natalia against Alia in a dungeon match. Um, does Natalia win here? I can't even remember what happens. I just remember the the, the helper, whatever she, Maya Lim. I don't know. I don't know what her fucking name is. She comes out. There's just that many jobber women that get like like Alia, like fucking Alia. There's so many jobber women in WWE as well, like and AEW. But at least you actually know a few in WWE. Like they actually got a bit of fucking name value. Um, but yeah, she comes out and then like it fades to black as Natalia leaves out the ring. It's like what? Um, is there any other match? And, uh, there was a funny backstage segment with like McIntyre and uh, Mad Cat Moss. Happy Corbin defeats Cesaro for anybody that gives a fuck. Um, Cesaro <laughs> probably on his way at the door. Um, Goldberg. Actually, this is actually like, Goldberg isn't even known for promos, right? He's nowhere near known for promos, but like, yes, it just feels authentic. It feels fucking real. You know what I mean? He's a big fucking guy sitting there with his big jacket on. He's fucking like. I'm the only Goldberg, bitch. You know, he's like, you're my friend, Michael. But hey, I'm going to beat this punk. You know, I, I, it's not, he doesn't sound as deep as that, but you get me, guys. I actually enjoyed this promo. I actually enjoyed both promos. It was better than another generic face-to-face -face between the two. So I, I enjoyed this. He basically says he's going to beat Roman Reigns. This isn't the last chapter. He's going to go on to Mania, and then he's also going to beat Brock Lesnar again. Tell you what, like, I wouldn't mind the Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, Goldberg triple threat, but I think that would be more saved for like WrestleMania Backlash if they're ever going to do that. I, I'd be down for that, you know, definitely. Because triple threat match, it means like, you know, like Goldberg can be in a long enough match and he's not doing near enough at all the work. The other two can do all the work. I mean, they can fucking lay out Goldberg early on and shit like that. And um, is there anything else, guys, that happened on this show? I can't really recall anything. I mean, I, I doubt Goldberg's interview was the last thing. Uh, probably the women's title match was the last thing on the fucking show, but at the same time, um, we also uh, have, yeah, Ronda Rousey on the show as well, basically saying she could beat Sonya Deville with one hand behind her back, but I believe that was it, guys, for your SmackDown, not exactly, I mean, a brilliant eclipse, so I'm assuming the women's match went pretty long, but you know what, guys, the fuck all on the show, but there wasn't anything particularly... I mean, apart from, like, the Alia Natalia, which was always going to be awful, like, the rest of the show wasn't that bad, because the New Day got buried and I enjoyed that, but McMahon coming back via email, not exactly ideal. But anyway, guys, leave your thoughts down below. I will give this SmackDown a 2 out of 10, and until then, peace.